Well, good morning. My name is Andrew Jones, and I am the pastor of youth, children, and families here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. And I'd ask for you to stand with me for our call to worship, if you would. And that should be in your bulletins. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with singing and dancing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's continue to stand for our hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. Well, before we take our seats, let's turn around and smile at one another and wave. That's our our greeting. And we'll wave to those in the balcony and we'll wave to those up in the the camera who are worshiping with us at home. I invite the congregation to be seated. Now, um, you know, the Bible says do not covet. You know, we're not supposed to be jealous about what other people have, but... But you know, every week that I stand up here to preach, no one sits in the front. Look at this. This is wonderful to have everyone sitting in the front. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with the the way in which I lead service. But let me introduce myself. My name is Matt Hadley, and I'm the senior pastor here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. And we're so happy to have you here for us a very special Sunday. It is our children's musical. And we know that this is the second Sunday of Easter. We are in Easter tide. And throughout this entire season, we are remembering resurrection. And what we're going to encounter here today is a message. Yes, God. <laughs> May I, what, what would you like me to know? Now, if a big hook comes out and pulls me off stage, we know we have problems. Well, I was talking about resurrection. Yeah, resurrection. Uh, you know, two years ago in March, we had this set up just like this. And then the world said, sorry, we're closed. And so we had to, in essence, put all of the hours, countless of hours that had had gone into creating this beautiful stage, we had to kind of put it metaphorically into a tomb. But now as we celebrate the season of resurrection, this, this show has been resurrected and we're so happy you are here. There is just a very long list of people Um, who have put in a little bit of time or a whole lot of time to make sure that this show is indeed happening. And so we are thankful, appreciative of all of the people who have helped make this possible. Uh, At the end of the service, Neil is going to share a few words of his appreciation for everything that has has gone on. But let me make just a few announcements before we begin uh, really to continue with this worship service. Next Sunday... After the 10.30 service, after this service, 
um, we're going to have an opportunity, an hour-long opportunity for anyone who has questions about the church, about Methodism, and, and are contemplating taking membership here. We're going to gather together in the Walnut Room. We have had two confirmation classes that have taken membership here during this pandemic, but we've not been able to have an adult class, and so we have a number of people who are interested. So if you'd like to just come and even explore, there's not going to be any pressure. I'll just answer any questions. You know, how is the Methodist church different than a Baptist church or than the, the, a Lutheran church or a Roman Catholic church? And we can answer all of those questions. If you came this week thinking you were going to get a sermon, I did preach here in the sanctuary last night. And so if you go to our YouTube channel or go to our website, you can uh, hear the sermon, watch the sermon last night, which was on doubt. And uh, to be human is to indeed walk with doubts, to try and navigate those waters. Typically, when it comes to time of prayer, we ask people to text in any items of joy and concern. And when our prayers of the people are read aloud, we hear them. Because of our service today, that's not able to happen. But your cards in your bulletin uh, have a, a place for any kind of prayer concerns or any messages you'd like us to, to have. If you run out of room, you can use the back. Or you can text our office this afternoon or tomorrow morning, umcwfb.org, and on Monday, our prayer team will get a list of things that we want to be uh, continuing to remember in our time of prayer. So are you ready to continue to worship? Yes. All right, and so we're going to start with prayer, and I'm going to invite Pastor Andrew to come and lead us in this endeavor. Pastor Andrew is our pastor of uh, Children, Youth, and Family Ministries, and we're really starting to feel a lot of momentum as we grow in those programs. Would, we, would you join me in some silent prayer? Gracious God, we are blessed this morning with many guests and families. Help us to welcome every guest as if we were welcoming you, delighted by their presence and ready to share with them our good news of love. We give you thanks, O oh God, especially for children, for the blessing that they are and the blessings we may be to them as we seek to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. We praise you, O oh God, for sending your beloved child Jesus, born as a baby, nurtured by his family and protected by strangers, who grew as a child, who was taught at the temple, surrounded by his community, and guided by his parents, who became an adult, who loved and blessed children, who cared for those who were sick, poor, and left out, who taught that God loves us like a parent, and who calls us his friends. Let us now pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Far away, but 
but they set an example you can follow today. This is a story that you ought to know about Shadrach. What kind of name is that Meshach? Who has a name like that Shadrach? Meshach. about this neighbor next door, except that his name was Nebuchadnezzar. We've heard that he's done great things for his country. And we also heard that he had a very bad temper. That king can get hot mad. <laughs> pay the tax anymore. Of course they're going to pay it. They must pay it. What makes them think they can stop paying tax? Just because they don't like it? Well, well, see who doesn't pay tax now. Get my horse. Get my army. Get out of my way. We're going to Judah. The king did come to Judah and there was a war. We were all taken prisoner and forced to go to Babylon. It was quite a change. And we not so good at change? Our hearts were broken when we were forced to leave our homes. such a bad king after all. He gave us a nice place to live. Yay! He sent us to school. Yay! He gave us nice clothes. Yay! He gave us all nice, neat haircuts. Yay! He gave us goodies from his dinner table. Yay! 
it. No, no. Our folks had taught us not to eat that kind of food, so we talked the palace guards into letting us have the food we've been taught to eat at home. When we were finally called before the king, he told us we were the bravest and the wisest of all the kids he had captured. He was very pleased with us. Yay! Which just goes to show it pays to remember what you learned at home. dream. It frightened him so much that he woke up. It made him very angry. And you never and you know Nebuchadnezzar can get very angry. <laughs> Just a dream, but a nightmare. We haven't had a wink of sleep since three o'clock. And if we can't sleep, then nobody else can. Get the sorcerers, get the astrologers, get the magician, and get my donkey donuts, and get them now. <laughs> they came scurrying from everywhere, bowing and scraping, shivering, and wondering what the king was angry about this time. It took you long enough to get here. Well, I've had a bad dream, and now I can't remember what it was. Now I want you to tell me what it was and what it means. Now, 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 now. I want to know right now. All the wise men thought they must have heard now. wrong. Surely the king didn't expect them to know what he had dreamed. Finally, one of the wise men said very politely, Oh, great and wonderful king, um, there must be some mistake. You must tell us and then we can tell you what it means. Me? Tell you? What good are you if I have to tell you everything? Do you think we pay you so we have to do all the work? Bah, 
come back. I called you here to tell me two things. One, what I dreamed, and two, what it means. Now, if you tell me what I dreamed and what it was, I will give you great riches and honor. But if you don't, you'll be cut into little pieces. Now get busy. that God would tell us what the king's dream was and what it meant.
do it. Worthless! Oh, you can't get good help these days. Oh, I'll have their heads. Oh, King, King Nebuchadnezzar. What? Who are you? I'm Shadrach. I'm Meshach. And I'm Abednego. Oh, I remember you. What do you want? We have come to tell you a dream. You what? We've come to tell you your dream. Your wise man could not have possibly answered your question, and I couldn't have done it by myself. But the God my friends and I worship can. Well, what does this God of yours tell you? He told us about your dream, and this is how it went. You dreamt of a large statue made of gold and silver and iron and brass and clay. I'm beginning to remember my dream now, but there is more. Tell me the rest. And a big stone broke the feet of the statue, and the whole statue fell and was broken into a thousand pieces. Then the stone changed into a mountain covering the whole land. That was my dream. Yes, I remember it all now. Tell me the rest. It's a prediction of the future. You are a good king and you're the golden statue. But the kingdoms to follow you will not all be good. Some will be like iron, some will be like brass, some, will, some like iron and some like clay, and they will all be destroyed. Then God will set up a kingdom which will not be destroyed, but will be like the mountain covering the whole land. This is the most astonishing thing I've ever heard. You say this God of yours revealed it to you? Yes. Well, Daniel, you and your friends will have high positions in my government. Yes, pull me up onto your podium of greatness. What is she talking about? We don't have one of those. I know. And I will even spare the wise men. How do you like that? Well, it's better than the podium of greatness. <laughs> no, it isn't. I'm going to make a decree so that all of my people will know about your God. This is my decree. Your God is God of gods. Your God is the Lord of kings. A revealer of secrets. Praise the Lord your God. Praise the Lord your God. Praise the Lord your God. It was a great day. Everything was going fine until for a while. Then the king have a bright, had a bright idea. He had a great idea. He was going to build an enormous image. Then he was going to call all the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and the rulers of all provinces to come to the dedication of the image which he, the king, will set up. The outspoken king and his misunderstood queen came down <laughs> amongst the village people. They were so proud to reveal the orange statue that the queen's aunt and grandfather sculpted from an amazing polymer called plastic. and Aunt Stephanie, all of the denarii that the people of Babylon had paid in taxes for this interesting statue. Well, my friends and I couldn't believe our ears. We liked the king and he had been very kind to us, but we could not obey his law. We, could not, we couldn't bow down to his statue. We will roast him. The one true God. And just when all the townspeople started to gaze to the south, they saw the erection of the orange statue. Now let it rise! Whoa! Meshach and Abednego were getting very Come on. nervous. Up in the air. They would worship oh. only the one true God. They knew what they had to do. They had to say. 
to the king. Hey, king, did you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego aren't following your orders? <sighs> well, the king didn't know, but he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come before him. Worshipping the king's image? Now don't answer too quickly. We'll give you a second chance. If you bat out now, everything will go back to normal. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown into the fiery furnace, and there is no God that will be able to save you. No, we will not worship your idol. So is that how you pay me? So is that how you pay my kindness? Heat the furnace! Seven times hotter than ever before, and throw those kids into the furnace. Or 
Everything I said about your God not being able to, to deliver you. He is able. Oh, I've been such a foolish king. I let my anger run away with me, but I won't do that again. I have learned my lesson. From now on, I will worship the one true God, and I'll make a law. Yes, I'll set a decree so that all of, so that all of my people will never say anything against your God, or I'll have them cut into little pieces, and I'll... I'll... I... <clears throat> I'll just promote you to high positions in the land of Babylon. Yes! Yeah. We'll be able to do your plenty of greatness again. You already did that. Seriously, what is this what is this kid talking about? We what don't have po- one of those. What is this podium of greatness that you speak of? <laughs> what is this podium of greatness? What is the podium of greatness? It's your comfy chair. Oh, now let us all remember, there is but one God, and we are to be true to him and praise him with everything we have. Or I'll... I'll, I'll try to remember my promise. Now let us all praise God.
All right. Thank you, thank you. That was pretty good, right? And we, we, we now all know that the sanctuary is not sprinkled. Otherwise, we might have gotten our own little shower. But you guys did great two times in a row. Why are we still smoking? Okay. That's all right. That's right. So if, after the last show, I talked about courage. And remember what I defined courage as? Courage is the ability to do something even when we are feeling afraid, even when we're feeling afraid. And in this story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who I called Rack, Shack, and Benny last service, they, they, they had the courage to say, no, we're only going to worship the one true God. And the Bible says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for God is with you wherever you go. And in the New Testament, it says, God did not give us a spirit to be a coward, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-control, self-discipline. And so last service, I talked about the Wizard of Oz, right? The Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Lion, and the Lion wanted courage, and the Wizard said, it's, it's already been in you all along. The people who are heroes have no more bravery than you. But I told you last service, I was going to tell you a story about a time where I was really afraid, but I had the courage to go on. My wife and I were in a different country. We were on an island, and we were walking along the beach, and it was starting to get dark. And we were trying to get back to where we were going to go, and all of a sudden, a whole pack of dogs wild dogs. They, no two dogs looked the same, and all of a sudden, they came right up on us, and my wife and I are holding hands. Do you think we were afraid? Yes. yes. Do you think we were courageous? Yes. yes. Yes, and what I said to my wife, I said, just keep walking. Show no fear. Be courageous. My heart was beating, but outwardly, I was being very courageous, and do you think we got, got all chewed up on the way back to the hotel? No, look at me. I'm still here. I'm all right. There are going to be times where even though you may have something that, that you're a little anxious about or fearful about, what you're really going to need to do, what God is really going to need you to do is to keep that fear inside. And fear can be a good thing because it can protect us, but keep that inside and be courageous. Be like Rack, Shack, and Benny, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and continue to always be faithful to your God. Should we hear from Mr. Neal? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we should hear from Mr. Neal. So let's give the kids one more big round of applause for their show today. So you might, you might not recognize everybody up here today. Um, in addition to having our children from the Whitefish Bay United Methodist Church, we've invited friends from Keith Avenue Elementary School and St. Mark AME to be part of our first joint collaboration between the church and our Milwaukee friends. We want to say uh, thank you to Dr. Stanley, the principal at Keith Avenue, who's just a tremendous, a tremendous example of excellence in teaching. And we wanna thank her for letting me come into the school uh, for a couple hours a day on Thursdays uh, to work the show with all the children there. We did another performance at Keith Avenue on Thursday afternoon, and many of these children were part of that show as well. So let's thank our friends from Keith Avenue for playing with us. There are a few other people who are really critical in making this show come to life. I'd like to recognize, um, if I could have him come forward, John Wellstead, our sound engineer, and also part of a very dynamic duo, a husband and wife team who did the amazing set behind you. Let's give it up for John and Karen. Thank you 
you to everyone who came out and helped us put this, get this out of the tomb and put it back up again. Thank you so much. It took, it took many, many, many hours and many, many volunteer hands to put such an elaborate and beautiful set together. But the truth is, without John and Karen's talent and leadership and warm and inviting hearts, we never would have had enough people involved uh, to pull it together. Another one of our uh, heroes for this show is up in the sound booth in the uh, nest, Jan Pritzel, in charge of all of the lighting tricks. There's something to celebrate. There's certainly something to celebrate when John and Karen, uh, whose son has aged out of our uh, children's program and is uh, an adult now, um, John, Karen, and Jan, none of them have uh, children currently in our program. None of them have grandchildren in our program. But that's one of the neat things about our faith community is that we are, as Pastor Matt reminds us each week, intergenerational. And these three people have lived out their calling to bring the arts to the children at the highest possible level. So we thank them very, very much. There, there are a couple other people who I just have to recognize before we sing our closing song. And the first is a young woman who made her director, student director debut. Let's hear it for Miss Elena. Another person that we want to recognize today was in on it from the beginning. Two years ago, Miss Anna Van Newland taught all these children their songs and their choreography. And she taught me the choreography over and over and over each week. Thank you, Miss Anna. And uh, finally, I want to also recognize uh, Jenny Fisher, the co-director of the production today. Come on up, Jenny. Uh, Jenny is co-director extraordinaire. And this fall, when we were struggling to figure out how to regenerate interest in the children's music ministry program, Jenny was essential in building back that program by having her kids and the friends of her kids come on Wednesday night to Wednesday Night Live. Without her recruiting efforts and warm, welcoming spirit, we would not have had a children's music ministry this year. <laughs> Jenny has an unending well of energy. And at the first service, I joked that that came from caffeine and God. But I think the truth is, it's her deep faith and love of Jesus Christ that keeps her so committed to the kids and to everybody in this church. So let's thank Jenny Fisher. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Matt for giving me the opportunity to go and work with the children at Keefe Avenue Elementary, and for Pastor Andrew for being there in moments unexpected <laughs> that we needed his help. So thanks to Pastor Matt and Pastor Andrew. Now we want to thank Mr. Neal. Thank you. Let's all stand and sing our closing hymn, This Little Light of Mine.
And so, brothers and sisters, we have, we have talked about resurrection, the resurrection of the children's musical, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what a joy it has been to be with all of you this day with all this energy. That's why young people have children, right? But uh, friends, as you go out into the world, remember, it still is Easter season. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. May God grant all of you the courage even when you are afraid to do the right thing, to be God's man, to be God's woman wherever you are, because our world needs it so much. And so parents uh, will probably stage a picture so that parents can have a, a good picture. But friends, God loves you. Love one another as well. Amen.